Hey guys, my name is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today's video is going to be my son Dimi's 10 month update. You know what's crazy to me is that in two more months he will be a year old. Two months does not seem like very long at all. That's just insane to me. He just still seems like such a little baby, like he's a big little baby because <laughs> he, he hasn't been very mobile, he just hasn't really seemed like over his life he hasn't really seemed like he has an urge to go anywhere. He's just a content little guy to snuggle and lay around. So he really, really doesn't seem like he's going to be a year old because Sophia was crawling by five months and she was walking at a year and there's no way he's going to be walking in two more months. I mean, it's possible I suppose, but very unlikely. So it's just like crazy to me that he's 10 months. But anyway, let's just get right into this video. <laughs> started crawling a little bit. He, for the longest time, would only roll over. It just took him a long time to even like really want to do anything physical. But as he is older, he seems more and more interested in moving. He wants to do things on his own a little bit more, which is exciting. And over the last couple weeks, it seems like a switch has kind of flipped in his little brain and he wants to start crawling. And he just is very mobile on, on the ground. He's nowhere near walking yet. But he can crawl like one or two steps. And he can roll over so fast now. He just go, he can roll either way. He can roll several times in a row. And he just like, you turn away and you turn back and he's rolled over. It's just fast as lightning. It's so hard to change his diaper now that he can roll so much. And he's starting to not want to lay there for his diaper being changed. For the longest time, he actually really enjoyed having his diaper changed, which was a nice change from Sophia, who thinks it's like the end of the world every time you change your diaper. <laughs> but now he'll do the alligator roll, and I'll have to hold him up by his one leg and wipe him, and it's just like, <sighs> it's a wrestling match. It really is. And he's been able to start doing where he can go from sitting on the floor, he can go out and go off to one direction and get his legs out behind him and go to his hands and knees and he can crawl a couple steps and then he can actually push himself back and kind of put his this his one leg underneath him and he can get back to sitting. So he's really good at that now, which is really nice that I don't have to always like keep sitting him back up because his he really does just like to sit there and play with toys. But then as he's got more, gotten more interested in wanting to learn to crawl, he's not been staying sitting and he can't get there on his own so I have to put him back all the time. But now at least he can get himself back to sitting, which is a big step I feel like. He's eating more and more food all the time. He eats a lot more of what we're eating, which is really nice. He eats a lot of soups and bone broth and we have a really nutrient dense, like more traditional foods diet. And so he's just eating a lot of good, healthy, nutritious foods, which I'm really happy about. He eats fruits and vegetables. He, he'll eat some, he'll eat good grass-fed meat cut into chunks. He's actually really good at chewing up meat chunks, but I think it's because he has so many teeth. He eats raw liver, healthy fats, fermented foods when I can get him to eat those. They're sour and he doesn't really like sour all that much, so it's kind of hard to get him to eat any fermented foods, but I just will offer them to him every now and then and see if he will start to like them. Eventually, if you offer it to him enough times, he'll start to like them. That's how it was with my daughter, at least. But he eats a lot of really good, healthy foods. And he doesn't ever seem to have trouble with choking. He's like barely choked once in his life when he was like six months old. And other than that, like I'll give him chunks of like anything and he can just chomp it right up with his teeth and he's good to go. So I'm really happy that he's just getting more and more like he'll just eat whatever we're eating. It's, he's just more like another member of the family who just eats the meal with us. He'll sit in his high chair and we'll give him little pieces and it's really cute. He, he wants to feed himself though, that's one thing. He refuses to eat purees with a spoon. He will not be fed. He has to do it himself. So you have to, it has to be a food that can be cut into chunks and that you can put in, his, in front of him in his high chair and that he can pick up and put in his mouth. Otherwise he won't eat it. It's really funny. <laughs> he still breastfeeds all the time, which is really awesome. He did take a little bit of a, a dip a couple weeks ago. He, there was like one day where he wouldn't breastfeed at all. He only had his morning and evening nursing and he just ate solids the rest of the day. And then the next day after that, he would not eat any salads and he would only breastfeed. 
So he's kind of like gone, gone on this like roller coaster of like nursing or not. <laughs> he's like been an all or nothing guy, but he's getting kind of back on his regular schedule or regular eating schedule of nursing some and eating some. He nurses whenever he gets up, gets up for bed or goes to bed. So about six times a day still. So he's still getting quite a bit of milk, which I'm really happy about, but supplementing a lot with foods because he's a big boy. He needs a lot of food. We all got a little cold over the last week, which is why this update is a week late. I'm sorry about that. I just couldn't film. My throat was so sore and I just felt like crap. But all of us got sick, which was really unfortunate. But he was sleeping more. He was back to taking three naps a day instead of two. I was trying to get him having plenty of sleep so he could get better faster. He kind of seemed to lose his appetite quite a bit. I was still trying to get him to nurse as much as possible. I was just offering him the rest like a lot more than I normally would. I just wanted to make sure he had enough nutrients to get better. And I also wanted to make sure that he didn't get hydrated. Because I always worry about that when babies are sick because his soft spot will start to like dip just the tiniest little bit and I start to worry that he's getting dehydrated so I just offer him to be, to nurse all the time as much as he possibly could want. <laughs> he had a stuffy nose and I think he had a sore throat too. It's kind of hard to tell. I wish I could just tell you what was wrong but I think he had a sore throat. The rest of us did have a sore throat. But I have a Highlands Baby Mucus and Cold Relief um, liquid medicine. It's a homeopathic medicine and I gave that to him when before he went to bed at night and that really seemed to help him sleep. Because even though they were sick, they still slept pretty decently. And I feel like that medicine really helped him not be so stuffy at night that he couldn't breathe because that's really frustrating. And then also probably helped his throat not be as sore because there wasn't as much mucus and stuff going around. But we seem to be mostly better now. It's just taking a little time to get the kids back on a routine like normally happens after you're sick. They just kind of seem to be all over the place. They're used to just getting their way and not having to take naps like normal so it's just kind of getting them back to like no this is how we do stuff and I know you're used to it because you were sick but we're just gonna get back to normal. That takes a little bit of an adjustment for them usually. The biggest update I feel like are his sleeping arrangements. They've changed like two times over the last month. A few weeks ago I think we moved him upstairs. We moved him out of our bedroom which was such a big deal. That is always the hardest transition for me is when the babies move out of our bedroom. It just seems like such a big step. I had the hardest time with it. I didn't sleep well for like a week or two. It was horrible. He did so well. He was such a champ. He went, he didn't even skip a beat in his sleeping. He still, still slept through the night. He took perfect naps. So he had no issues on his end. It was just me feeling a little overly attached. But it has been so nice to have our bedroom back because you don't have to be like, super quiet when you're going to bed. I can actually get up and go pee at night and not like be all stressed out that I'm gonna wake him up. Luke's kind of a loud sleeper so I won't like freak out if he starts snoring. So it's just like kind of relaxing to have our bedroom just the two of us again. So he went, we moved him up to the extra room upstairs. There's two rooms upstairs. One's Sophia's room and the other one we've been using kind of as a food storage room but there was enough room for a crib, so we put him in there at first. I just wanted to see how he would do moving out of room at all. And I also was planning on not putting them in the same room until he was more mobile, because I was all worried that she would like poke his eye in the middle of the night and he wouldn't be able to get away from her or something. So he was in his own room for like a week or so. And then I was talking to my friend and she was bringing up the point that it'd probably be easier to move them together while they're younger. The younger they are, the more easy the adjustment will be, and I was like, yeah, that's a good point. I've been just like dreading this transition for a long time because it's like a new thing. Like, I'm fine with sleep training babies, I've done it twice, but this is one thing I had never done before, so I was like nervous about it for some reason. Even though they're both amazing sleepers and they've both been sleep trained and there should have been like no problem, and even if there was, we would have worked through it. I don't know why I was so worried about it. So we did move him to Sophia's room, and they've actually done really well, which I should have figured. Sophia, for the first like few nights, she cried for like an hour, like cried fussed, like she just felt, I mean, even though it was so dark in there, I was like, how does she even know he's there? Because he was like asleep. He just fell asleep and slept through her crying, which was crazy. He sleeps through anything. It's, it's been like shocking to see how much he can sleep through from her. <laughs> I guess that's just common with second babies, probably. But she seemed like really disturbed that there was someone else in his room, so it did take a couple nights of her just crying for like an hour or so when they first went to bed. 
And then now they do really good. She might fuss for a little bit, he might fuss for a little bit, but then they fall asleep. They sometimes wake each other up in the middle of the night. And since they've been sick, this has been happening more. Before that, I wasn't even having to go up there at all to like talk to them or get them to lay back down. But since they've been sick, there's been like maybe one time a night over the last week that I maybe had to go up there. But other than that, I've been surprised with how well they've done together even being sick. They got sick like right after we moved them up. It was a bummer. Bad timing. But normally when we're not sick, they'll just put themselves back to sleep again because they do know how to do this because they've been sleep trained and they've just slept good for so long. So once we're all the way back to normal and everything's just like we're past the sickness, I feel like they start I feel like they'll start doing really good and they'll just get more and more used to it, which will be really nice. We actually got a second camera to connect to our one monitor. So I have this monitor here. This is the one monitor, but there's two cameras upstairs in that room that's so you can like switch the screens and look at each of their different beds, which is so nice because we have not had the monitor on Sophia since he moved upstairs like weeks and weeks ago. So I was like really curious, like what is she doing in there while she's like crying when they first go to when they first go to bed. So it's just been really nice to see both of them. There's an option where you can it'll like switch the screens every few seconds, which is kind of nice. Most of the time, like at night, I'll just leave it on his screen because he's the one that will wake up more than her or he'll wiggle more than her. I'm just concerned more about him because she's been up there longer and this is more of a new thing for him. This is a good baby monitor. It took us forever to figure out how to switch the screens because there's no instructions that come with it, which is so dumb. But you press the two top buttons like almost at the same time and it'll switch the screen. So there's Dimmy's bed. And then you switch the screen and there's Sophia's bed. So super handy. I really love that we got that second camera. Not totally necessary, but just gives me such peace of mind. It's really nice. The playpen is set up in the extra like food storage room just in case like it's the middle of the night and they keep waking each other up and they've been crying for hours and I just like need them to sleep. I can put him in the other room and they'll sleep better. That has not happened yet and it probably will not happen, but it just makes me feel better that the option is there. And then also what we have used it for a couple times, he's actually sleeping in there right now because sometimes their lap naps don't line up. Sometimes I can stretch him from all morning until her noon nap and they can both go together to take their nap and then he'll take another one in the afternoon. But today he was really tired so he took a morning nap and then he didn't even know, need to go to bed until like an hour after she had been in bed and that would have definitely woken her up to put him in there. So I just put him in his playpen and then his later third nap he'll take in his in their room. You know. It's just nice to have it just in case. But I'm just so, so excited that they've done so well with this transition because I was really quite nervous about it. But I'm just happy that the transition is over with and we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's just getting them even more used to it and they'll just do better and better as they do it longer. So that is like the main big update for this 10 month update but other than that like he's just just a happy-go-lucky little guy he's just mostly content other than when he's sick of course he still loves riding on my back in the carrier I try not to do it as much because I'm trying to get him to be on the ground more and like practice his rolling over and crawling and everything but normally every other day or so he will end up riding in the carrier for a while and it's just so nice to have him back there he's so snuggly but I think that's all for this update. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And make sure you go to my channel and subscribe so you don't miss any other videos because I do a lot of motherhood, homesteading, cooking from scratch, all sorts of different content. Make sure you go over to my blog and subscribe to my email list because I do a lot more other things than just YouTube. So thank you guys for being here and watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.